do we learn from all the world's data? Like what causes what? Or estimating beta? If we wanna know if preschool affects your shot at college, our task is not so easy. You have to acknowledge we can correlate the two with results that are resounding, but that's likely an error and no, not from rounding. Correlations aren't causal, that evidence is compounding. The problems of their variables that might be confounding. What we want is two groups equal in every way, except one gets preschool or any treatment we say. The key is to randomize treatment and control so confounds our balance, at least that's our goal. This is called an experiment, some say the gold standard, but others say it's old and its reputation slandered. It's a powerful tool used throughout lab science, but for social problems there might be too much lab reliance. Observing man in nature helps us learn about mankind, but nature doesn't randomize, so we're in a bind. If only there's a way these ideas could be combined, well, you're in luck since this rap is of that mind. It'll tell you how the field and the lab can be aligned and teach you some new vocab words if you're so inclined. So listen to list to help you list out all the facts and Rohan's rhymes to make it stick like candle wax. Get ready to learn this new nomenclature. Let's bridge the gap between lab and nature. How do we help parents read to their kids more? This bonding helps their relationship at its core. So you make an app that sends text reminders. This way you can nudge them to see past their blinders. Next we have to test if this app is effective. So we'll experiment, but let's be reflective. For years most experiments were very theoretical. Participants were students and the setting hypothetical. To follow this tradition we'll recruit undergrads. We'll tell them to imagine that their moms and dads will give them a doll that can track how much is read and then half will get text reminders just like we said. This is called a lab experiment. That's our first type. But do outcomes from college kids live up to the hype? The outcome here is reading. That's data we'll collect. And the difference in outcomes is called the treatment effect. Treatments can help some, but for others things may worsen. So the treatment effect varies person to person. Meaning if you want to test if your app helps parents, using college students won't make that apparent. This brings us to the second type. It's called AFE. A's for artifactual and participants are the key. The setting's still abstract, but the subjects are on target. So this test is more reflective of the people in that market. Now a doll is not a child and the stakes are pretty low and the task might not let the parents use what they know. This brings us to FFE. The F stands for framed. The task is framed as real here, so it's aptly named. The info task or stakes are more real. There's no catch like reading to your kid, not a robot cabbage patch. This setting's better for us. Not to be argumentative, but tentatively it will be a lot more representative. One remaining issue here has a special name. It's the Hawthorne effect. And here is its claim. People act differently when they're being seen. So scrutiny makes research subjects more keen. If you don't believe me, there's no need to scoff. But I bet you're more relaxed when Zoom screens are off. That brings us to the last type and closer to reality. Natural field experiments take place in actuality. Participants don't know that they're in an experiment, so they're free to cry in sadness or laugh in merriment. Treatment text could be sent directly by the preschool, so Hawthorne can be ruled out. Covertness is our tool. Running different types of studies helps uncover all the rules, which helps us learn about our world, and that's pretty cool. Now you're a pro with this new nomenclature, so go bridge the gap between lab and nature.